It's time for another edition of Patty and the Millennials. I'm Patty Jackson. Thanks for joining us. We've got Mean to Say What. We've got hey. Chocolate Divinity, who's a year older. We've got Tamara Stewart. We've got Lisa Collins. We've got Troy Barnes. We've got Shanine Speaks. And our special guest today is Dr. Brandy Baldwin Ross. Yeah. Put in work. You millennials are getting a horrible reputation about the workplace and work manners and everything. So today, Dr. Brandy, I want you to talk about work conflicts and how people can handle it from saying no, horrible bosses, how do you respond? Yeah. Give us life. Okay. So first things first, you know, at work, you're not going to get along with everybody. And if you've been working for a decent amount of years, you know, some crazy people at work. And so especially this industry, especially, especially specific industries are very toxic Mm -hmm. work environments. But you cannot allow someone else to control your mood and your behavior. But they still crazy. Right. So what do we do? I think the first thing is, how do you say no? When people are bugging you, when they're asking you for requests that are ridiculous. I mean, what do you guys do? What do you ladies do when it's time to say no? Are you are you direct or? I'm very direct. Um, I've been working since I was 12, legally 16. I know how to deal with a variety of people. I just have learned to say, hey, I can't handle this right now. or I don't have the time to do this. And this is why I found that that's the best way to handle it. Because a lot of times when you're just short with people, they just think that you don't want to do the work. But if you tell them and explain, I feel like explaining things sometimes with people Mm -hmm. that you have to have a long term relationship with really helps. But you don't got to explain everything to somebody. That's another thing I've learned. Some people I could just be like, all right, I'm not messing with you. I don't got to deal with you every day. I don't we don't need to have a little explanation. Explanation, but some people, if I gotta deal with you every day, I got, I got, I explain things so that the other person is aware of why I can't do something. Well, the thing is, everyone doesn't know how to say no. Everyone's not direct all yeah. the time. Yes. Is anyone in here not as direct? I'm a little passive. I'm you little really passive. are, and I've tried I to am. talk to you I about am. it. I'm a little mm-hmm. passive. I just, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll make it work. If I can't tell you no, I'm going to find some way to fit it into my schedule, to get it done, to make it work. Because I'm just that person that tries to make sure that people know that, like, I work hard and I continuously want to keep that repertoire because I work so hard to gain it. So. Mm, I know you're not mm. passive, Shanine. No. <laughs> I'm not passive <laughs> at <laughs> all. And I will tell you, yes, I say no. I say no directly. And, you know, I just, I, I have no problem explaining. And I know that I consciously do what I have to do to carry myself to make sure that I do it professionally or what have you. But I never lose sight if I put respect first. So when I do that, it depends on what I'm saying no to. Am I saying no to something that's just completely against my beliefs, completely against my integrity, the way I carry myself, the way I I'm going to allow you to treat me, then you get a direct no. But if it's something that I just don't have time to do, of course I'm going to explain it. I'm going to explain it in the most professional, respectful way possible, but I'm always firm. And that goes for coworkers, bosses, or whatever. I did have a recent situation with somebody that I was that I used to work with or what have you, and I let this person go for about a year of just being passive just for the sake of the love of my work and the love of what it was that I'm doing. And, you know, there was an incident where I had to say, you know what? Enough is enough. You're going to forget Shanine Speaks right now. You're going to get mean because you have to understand that if we're going to be in any space together, you will respect me. You will respect the way you want to respect my humanity first because I make sure I make an effort to respect yours. And once we deal with that, we're good. I have no problem problem saying no and it depends on what i'm saying no to do you ever drink tea <laughs> okay <laughs> just move on dr brand so, so here's the thing so so we usually have two extremes we have the people who are like you know what i'm i'm very direct and then we have the ones who may be like pushovers right so the catch is either way you have to find that happy medium the number one thing is it's not what you say it's how you say it yes. everything does not need an excuse or an explanation but the other thing is boundaries Saying no is about having that boundary so that you don't have to wait a year and then pop off on somebody because you 
haven't been the one to set that boundary mm-hmm. early on. Mm-hmm. So there are 101 ways to say no that doesn't work for me. Not right now. I'm going to have to think about it. Like put people on pause. You don't have to respond to people right away. But sometimes as women, we feel like we need to give them a yes or a no or people put pressure on us to do that. And it's not necessary. So the key is if you're more direct, lighten up a little bit and see if there's a way that you can just be maybe a little bit more indirect. If you're very, very indirect, then you need to work on being a little bit more direct and just saying no. The other thing is after you say no and how whatever way that you say it, be comfortable with silence. Like the awkward silence should not bother you. Like that doesn't work for me. Pause. We don't care. (laughs) And repeat yourself. Well, because I really want that doesn't work for me. Is that okay? And that's it. Like, I don't understand what else, why you're still talking, because I already made myself clear. So, Lisa, you had a job years ago. I hate it when you work there. They had you all in the snow and bad weather. And then a month later, they laid you off. They did. (gasps) They did. They totally did. It was, you know, one of those situations where, oh, we're making our our bottom line leaner because they were selling the company. And after all that sacrifice. So you ask yourself, that's the opportunity to ask yourself. So what did I sacrifice for? It gives you a new perspective and a new way of looking at it. So I prioritize now. My family comes first. My my. My priorities, the things that are important to me come first. And I'm not afraid to speak up and say, hey, listen, you know what? That doesn't work for me. I can't do that. Here's what I can do. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, that's where I am with it. Dr. Brandy, dealing with work conflicts. Okay, we're not going to get along with everybody that we work with. There's that person who likes to steal your stuff (laughs) out of the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Look at me getting personal. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't be in the room right now. Uh Keep it in. Uh (laughs) so here's the thing when it comes to conflict management the key is getting to the point where you can adjust your conflict management style for the scenario okay so think about this I'm going to give you a quick rundown there are five different conflict management styles the first one is competitive those are the people that usually are direct you really don't care about other people's feelings and when you're in a conflict it's a win-lose orientation I was right you were wrong or you you were right and man I feel bad because I was wrong so there's not a value judgment on any of these as I run through them quickly right but when you're in a competitive mindset it's a win-lose orientation somebody wins someone loses right then on the extreme opposite side of that you have the avoiders these are the ones they avoid in every last thing no i'm fine i'm okay Mm -mm, that didn't bother me you know daggone well you're mad because they ate your your cocoa krispies you know what i'm saying didn't replace that (laughs) box of cereal the avoiders it's a lose-lose because when you avoid conflict it gives the it doesn't give you an opportunity and it doesn't give them an opportunity to resolve it okay compromisers can't stand some compromisers because it takes forever. They just want, let's all put our opinions in today. No, too it many. takes too mm-hmm. much time. Mm-hmm. It's great to compromise if it's one or two people. If it's more than that, it can get challenging and take a long For time. Sure. Then you have accommodators. These are people who give in, so they continue to give in. This is great. This is what men do when you first meet them. <laughs> Baby girl, hey, you know, what did you want to eat tonight? Oh, I like seafood. You know, daggone well, you allergic to seafood, but you sat there and it took me out to a seafood dinner because you gave in, you know, mm-hmm. so those things that they do. It's great when you're accommodating. The other one is going to be um, collaboration. Collaboration is win, win-win for everybody. So here's the thing real quick. You have to make sure that the only time that you avoid a conflict or you or you um, are an accommodator and you give in is if you're in the low power party. If it's your boss, you might not want to try to check your boss. Mm -hmm. You may want to let it go, brush it off, say yes and move on. Right. If you're going to compete just like lawyers do, it's because you're anticipating that someone else is going to compete as well. Okay, they're going to try to one up me. I'm going to have to compete and get my point across. So there are different varieties as you become more emotionally mature, as you become more professionally mature, you have to be able to navigate. And the last thing I'm going to say about this is the number one thing, avoid conflicts that are petty that are trivial. Why is it that you're in the grocery store about to curse somebody out and you'll probably never see them ever again? Right. But on the flip Let side, a lot of people avoid <laughs> conflicts in close relationships. If I'm trying to build with you, if I'm married to you, we're in a relationship or we're working together every day, why would I avoid conflict? We have to address it because we're building on that. Mm-hmm. Once you break it down, there's no right or wrong. You just have to figure out how strategic you can be based on the situation. Well, Compton is in the building, Chocolate <laughs> Divinity, and she made quite a splash <laughs> here. She made an enormous <laughs> splash, but she shut it down. You remember that day. No one knew your name, but after you had to check somebody uh-huh. in the office space, everyone knew who Latoya was. Well, because here's my thing. Everyone's entitled to a bad day. Every day can't be a bad damn day, okay? So, 
My thing is like, I can take direction. I can take instruction. But what you're not going to do is yell at me. You're not going to raise your voice at right. me. My mother and father don't raise their voices at me. Not since I was little. And if they did, those were the would be the only people that I'd be like, oh, hold up. And then God. But um, sometimes like you just have, you have to battle. But then I'm a strong proponent of choosing your battles right. too. True. That True. day in particular True. at work, mm-hmm. I was like, ha, ha, hold up. I don't give a F about none of this. I know that's right. <laughs> for real, for real. Well, none of this run. <laughs> like, I will walk out today. You need to understand that I'm new in this position. And there are still things that I am learning. So we are all here to help one another. Mm-hmm. It's a stressful mm-hmm. job. Mm-hmm. Also, to piggyback off of what you said about how you should, um, when it comes to conflict or um, in your personal life. Mm-hmm. I feel like I stray from that because I'm going to say some sh- that really going to hurt your feelings. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, OK, so in order for me to not go there, I try to breathe, think about it. Don't address things when I'm angry. But I feel on the outside, I will in the market. You cut me off in line. Oh, well, you all right today? <laughs> Did you not see me sitting here? Did you not see me standing right here? I actually have to tell this man in the Wawa, I hope you have a horrible day. <laughs> This is Compton, everybody. Troy, as you get ready to, you know, step out, you getting some good advice because I am. You gonna meet some doozies. I am. You know, I find myself being a very cool, calm, and collected person. Most of the times, I am the mediator uh, when it's time to like figure out, you know, what's the problem? How can we fix this? How can we solve this? But I also do not run from my problems. Um, if there is a problem, I come to you very calm and with the correct tone because tone is very important Thank when you need you. to yeah. and address yes. a problem. Yes. Mm-hmm. So mixing up all of those things, I think I relate most with collaborator, but it is very sticky in a workplace to try to figure out your footing. When I was a boss, I was an admissions ambassador coordinator at Rowan. So I was the boss of 70 students, my peers, but I was still the boss. So I had to know how I had to understand how to come to them on a boss level, but still speak to them like we are the same age Mm -hmm. and understand like you can't do this. But we're still going to be cool after this. You're not allowed to be still be mad at me after I check you. And that's how it's going to be. We good? Mm. Okay, let's go. Yes. Let's move on. And that's that's how finger I, moving. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah, I know. I saw and that. And that's how I, you know, conducted my business. And, you know, that's how I plan on doing it because it was a non-fail method. It worked every time. Final words. Dr. Brandy, is it fair that millennials get a bad rap? You know what? I don't think that it's fair. A lot of things, you know, millennials are the most formally educated generation. We're more educated than any other generation. The difference is we just haven't been in the workforce for 20 years. We don't have the years of experience yet. And a lot of this interpersonal stuff, it comes into play through experience. Mm -hmm. Stuff that bothered you at 21, 22, at 32, it doesn't bother you anymore. So I think that we should be given a little bit of space and some room to grow and not be labeled that we're so immature or we're, we're unable to handle conflict but hey on the interpersonal front we haven't dealt with those horrible bosses or those people that have boundary issues and I'll tell you one thing that my um, business coach Nikita Thickpin she she says gentle honesty mm-hmm. always speak truth at all times but be gentle right. with it because you don't care what their reaction is it doesn't bother me if you're upset if you cry whatever it is I'm going to be honest with you I'm speaking truth to you not from an emotional place not from an ego place right. oh no you didn't right. I'm just going to breathe life to you right now and let you know right. that's really unacceptable how you're speaking to me they can do whatever right. they want with that right but gentle honesty if you remember that in conflict you'll get a lot far mm-hmm. further and the other thing is when you address somebody it's not to change their behavior you cannot change anybody else right so work on you being able to handle increasingly challenging conflict situations yeah it's us and it's our journey and our moment to learn from it wow final thoughts because we go around the room real quick ladies quickly i wanted to just say i've been in um radio since i was 18 and i i I, I was gonna say that before you said it it's something that i've had to learn i used to check everybody all the time when i first got in because that's the kind of environment that i came from but you can't do that when you're working with people and i've learned who to check and who not to check who to have a a talk it down and a sit down with and who not to who to just say okay I don't got to deal with you all the time so this is what you're going to get so I've learned how to differentiate 
differentiate according to who the person is and what relationship and, and how often you have to work with them. So those things matter because, you know, the person that you see once every month it, it, the, at the workplace, you have a conflict. I'm not going to do a whole sit down conversation. Like, no, we had we have what we had and that is what it is. But if it's somebody that you're in the room with every day or someone that you see every day, you sit in the same cubicle, that's something you got to work on. Otherwise, you're going to hate your job because you haven't resolved that issue. Damn. So my question is for the passive aggressive people like myself <laughs> that just keep on taking on work and more work and more work. How do you firmly just shut it down and say no? Like, I know we went over this, but again, just briefly and concisely. Yes. yes. Well, the passive aggressive people, you're resentful. Mm -hmm. You make it seem like it's other people's fault that you have boundary issues. Nobody told you to keep taking on other people's work. And you take on other people's work and they don't actually give you props for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's your yeah. responsibility to say mm -hmm. no and know when you have had your fill of giving. You do mm -hmm. not want to be a Tell martyr her, and sacrifice yourself and then be mad at everybody else. Yes. Right. Let the church say amen. Yes. 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 Absolutely. We can't drop the mic. Clear. <laughs> okay, Shanine. Yes, absolutely. Because, you know, I've had run-ins with chiefs and, and bosses. I've actually had a president of a news station take one of my presentations, and it had almost everything but my face on there. And, you know, I through giving advice through people who have, you know, kind of went a different way, who want you to be passive-aggressive, who want you to kind of find that medium – I kind of took the route of, you know, I feel like this needs to be addressed and I need to do this as passionately as I feel. And it's because you did something passionately to you. You stole something that was very personal for your lifestyle and everything. And, you know, it has done some good. You know, I've, I've gotten that respect for that. And, you know, I like it. I think it just goes back to that saying that I always say, you know, once you know how much your God controls, human positioning means nothing. So I think that's what kind of stares me where if you're a boss, like, of course, I'm going to make sure that I do it in the right tone, in the right way. And just because I'm in a professional setting as well. Oh, but you're going to know how passionate I am about it. And if you know you feel upset about something like that, then it's OK because you don't control it anyway. If I'm supposed to be here, I'm going to be here because my God knows I'm grateful and I show him that. So that's just kind of how it's been. It's been working so far. Please. So, so you have to understand what the situation calls for is, right. is, is my assessment yes. of the whole thing yep. because sometimes the, the gentle honesty works for people and sometimes they need West Philly Lisa to I agree. and straighten it out because that has happened to me in a workplace and some people need to be backed up a little bit so you got to be able to assess it and understand who you're dealing right. with and what the situation right. is. I always try the gentle honesty first and if it doesn't work then you, you, you know jerseys coming out. Mm -hmm. Toya, um, just want to say sometimes dealing with conflict, um, silence is key. Yes, if I is. go dark on you, you're behind. <laughs> You'll get the message. Speaks loud, though. <laughs> That's yeah. it. It does. It does. And, or some, and especially if it's like face to face, mm -hmm. you can read my mm -hmm. body language mm -hmm. and my gestures. You know, but in email, I just right. tend to go dark. No, here's the what thing. You think this I'm is what I love. Here? I know we're wrapping up. <laughs> this is what I love, though. And my mother taught me this. She said a well placed question will check somebody without mm -hmm. checking them. Someone says something, you just say, "Excuse me." Yes, <laughs> that right there will be like. Let me er, let me rephrase that. Let me back up, and that sometimes will bring someone all the way back down. So, a well placed question is great in terms of confrontation. Mm -hmm. Love it, Doctor Brandy. You give us life, Doctor Brandy <laughs> Baldwin is the author of Put in Work, and we love it when you sit. And come with us and have discussion. Neen, you was Neen today, Shanine. You were just yeah. Neen. Because you be like on that. I'm getting you some tea. I'm sorry. Oh, Troy, wow. Lisa, Tim, Chocolate Divinity, happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday. birthday. Mina, say what? This is Patty and the Millennials. Thanks for joining us on our podcast, which you can find right here at WDASFM.com.